Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is I, the tech adept, Jaeger Bishop. So what you're looking at on screen right now is a game called Heroes of the Pacific. Honestly, it's one of the best World War II games I've ever played. Certainly, it has to be the best flight <clears throat> Not so much simulator, but uh, the best uh, flying game, basically, set in the World War II era that I've played on the PS2. I've played some others. I will not name them. They were crap. I decided that, aside from the Grand Theft Auto series of videos replacing the Predator Concrete Jungle playthrough, since I've wanted to get some variety in there, um, I decided I want to play this instead for And that's for two reasons. One, I, I have dozens of other, well, okay, not dozens, but I have other games where I can fly around and shoot stuff and, like, fire missiles and stuff. But that's all predictable. Honestly, it is. This is a lot more, huh, how shall I say, intense? Because it's all guns. There's no missiles, there's no laser, tactical lasers, there's nothing. Just your guns. Just up close and personal, you shredding him, or he shreds you. Now obviously this isn't the first mission, but this is more of a pilot episode no pun intended, and I'd like your feedback and see if you would like to see more of this. Now also, I have completed the entire game on veteran difficulty. So I have unlocked every single plane, and I have upgraded all of them to the max. So let's start from the back, shall we? Whoops, sorry. The P-50, uh, yeah, P-40 Warhawk, P-40 and 15. The F4 FM2 Wildcat, the F4U4 Corsair, the P4, uh, P38 Lightning, uh, P38 L, the exact with this one. One of my favorite aircraft both in real life and in this game. The F6F M5 Hellcat. Now, it says here the Hellcat had ended the war with an unbeatable 19 to 1 kill ratio. Now, there's a little history behind that. See, this thing preceded the Wildcat, obviously, but it was a vast improvement overall in every single category that counted. Agility, speed, armor, guns, you name it, this thing had it. Another thing it had was a wealth of experienced pilots to bring out its full potential. Now, by the time the Hellcat actually 
came to service. Japanese pilots, many of whom were just raw rookies, had no chance. Because, you see, the Battle of Midway was the turning point. What was so significant about the Battle of Midway, not only were many of their car Japanese carriers sunk, but also many of Japan's most experienced pilots at the time also got shot down and killed. So there's that to consider. That was really the turning point for the war in the Pacific, was the Battle of Midway. Now the secret to America's success at the Battle of Midway was intelligence. Their intelligence group, codenamed MAGIC, had broken the Japanese codes, and by sending false signals all over the place, they started to figure out, you know, exactly where the Japanese were monitoring, what, what places were being monitored for attack, or where they would possibly hit next. This came in the form of a uh, signal, especially from Midway Island, specifically from Midway Island, or should I say, say, it was sent from Midway Island to I mean, wherever, I guess, as opposed to uh, Pearl Harbor, maybe, Oahu, anyway. It was sent there saying that they were low on water. And then they waited. And then the Japanese sent a transmission because they had intercepted the American transmission saying AF is out of water. Is low on water. Because AF was... Because that's what they were trying to determine what was AF. So they sent a code from Midway, and then when the Japanese said AF is low on water, it's like, okay, well, now we know, that's AF. So, now the reason they wanted to know this is because they, the Japanese were planning to attack target code named AF. They didn't know what it was. After they did, they had their navy lying in the Americans had their navy lying in ambush. <clears throat> they ha they were waiting. So the moral of the story is knowledge is power. Information is your best weapon. Because if you can predict where your enemy is going to hit and at what time, especially at what time and even better, what kind of strength they're going to have, you can prepare. Now, some people might think, well, aircraft, well, okay. Americans had a huge force. Actually, back then they didn't. Because you got to remember, this was shortly after Pearl Harbor, where the 8th Fleet got completely decimated at Pearl Harbor. Okay, they lost most of the battleships, including the USS Arizona, which there is a memorial to the USS Arizona on the island of Oahu. And... Honestly, the only thing that saved the United States at the time 
was the fact that their carriers were out on an exercise at the time. And actually, it wasn't even so much that their characters were out on exercises, they were late. Because of a storm. Now, you could say that this storm literally saved the United States from losing its carriers. Because while the carriers were not actually that heavily influenced, like, they didn't really have a problem going through the storm too much, the smaller, like, tin can escorts, like the destroyers, and the destroyer escorts, they did. They got tossed around, they got hung up, so larger ships had to help them. This included the carriers. So the carriers had to slow down, help the smaller ships, and were late on their return. As a result, they weren't there when the Japanese made their surprise attack on Midway. I mean, uh, Pearl Harbor. Sorry. No. <laughs> Midway was definitely not a surprise. <sighs> anyway, so that's that story. Funny how all these things are connected, isn't it? So, in short, what gave Americans the advantage in the Pacific? First, a bit of luck with the aircraft carriers not getting sunk at Pearl Harbor. Second, intelligence. And three, managing to take out more in experienced enemy pilots at Midway. That that one moment changed everything. And then later on, the, in, and I should say, later on, the introduction of, well, actually, even just this aircraft here, the Corsair. Pretty good machine. And then, of course, the Hellcat sealed the deal. Now, the Hellcat actually was present for the Battle of the Marianas. Well, also known as the Marianas Turkey Shoot. And there's a good reason for this. Most of the pilots that the Japanese could field were mostly rookies. Well, they were going up against seasoned veterans with brand new toys. <laughs> I mean, talk about a one-sided fight, right? <laughs> Anyhow. So that's your history lesson for today. Let's go ahead and we'll use my favorite aircraft. The P-47 Thunderbolt. Now, this thing has eight fifty caliber machine guns. Like, holy shit. But for some reason, it has a lower guns rating than the P-51, which only has six. Does that make any sense to you? Because it doesn't make any sense to me. But whatever. We're going to use the jug. Now, actually, the P-47 Thunderbolt, the reason it was called the jug is a when it was in a dive, it looked like a milk jug. That's why the Americans called it the jug. Now, 
what the, um, I guess, British thought, because that when they got it, they called it the jug for juggernaut because it could be anything else in a dive, which, when that got back, I guess, to the Americans, they were like, huh, yeah, okay, that, that works too. <laughs> anyway. It took me a long time to unlock that <sighs> P-51 Mustang. Now there are some interesting facts about the P-51 that I'll go into when I actually pilot it. For now, let's stick with the jug. Interesting fact that the jug with the P-47 Thunderbolt was actually the predecessor to the modern day A-10 Thunderbolt 2. Slice them in half with your guns. And there's a reason for that, because their gun because their tail gunner doesn't point down. But it does point up and behind. So you gotta watch out for that. much of a Japanese aircraft. I'm more of an expert on American and a American and German aircraft. But, you know. I mean, I'm sure there's a... Uh, I'm sure there's a couple of experts out there on uh, Japanese aircraft that can tell you more. I mean, this game certainly doesn't tell you the history. Will you shut up? I'm doing my best here. I mean, these 850 cows, they put in work. Like where? 
right. So, success. Sixteen kills, twenty six percent accuracy. Eh. That's why I don't call it a flight sim game, because you don't actually run out of ammunition. Your guns just overheat over time. Wake Island. As you can see, I have completed this on Ace, and we'll actually do this next time, if you like it. Do please feel free to put a like on the video, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And next time we'll tackle this mission, Wake Up Call. And we'll also talk about da, 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 da. Come on. Let's see. Da, 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 da. I'm granted I know more about uh, Japanese planes than I do Russian planes, but in any case, uh, yeah, we'll talk more about this aircraft, and of course all its variants. And also an interesting note of the fact that this thing skips past the C model. of the P-51. Until then, I have been the Tech Ed Up Year Bishop, and this has been Heroes of the Pacific. Also, do feel free to, if you're feeling a little generous, leave a tip to the PayPal link in the description below. Until then, have a good day. Bye-bye.